This is Chris Hall. He's an ultra cyclist with years of experience. He's ridden across Australia. He's finished Badlands three times and come top 10 in the national 24 hour time trial. And these are his 10 most favorite products. Ski straps. These ones are from Tailfin, but there are other ones available. I like these ones specifically because the buckle is curved. So it means that it's never gonna rub on your frame. They're really useful when you're out doing adventures or races. If you wanna carry some more stuff, you can strap it onto your bike. Or if a bag breaks, for example, you can use these in the various different lengths available to be able to fix it on the go. I've used straps like this when riding across Australia to be able to strap big bottles of water where you don't actually come across lots of water. The weirdest thing I've ever strapped to my bike is probably three baguettes and a croissant, but the croissant didn't stay croissant -y. Sorry, Chris, a quick interruption here. Today's video is sponsored by Sturka. So if you want energy bars, gels, salts, carb mix, or any other bits of nutrition, all in a very convenient package, then you might want to use the link in the video description down below for 25% off your first purchase. Thanks, Sturka, for sponsoring this video. Back to Chris. A lightweight down jacket. This specific one is from Patagonia, but there's loads of different options out there at various price points. For me, in ultra races and adventures, you want a lightweight and warm layer. I tend to use this over like a gilet or a rain jacket most of the time because it's easy to carry, it's small, it's lightweight, and it really does keep you warm. It's also great if you're sleeping in a bivy or in a tent, for example, and it does get colder at night, you can keep yourself warm by putting this on as an extra layer. Because they are soft, they kind of compress into weird spaces, which makes them really useful for being able to maximize your storage space on the bike. Also makes a really good cushion. Fold up shoes. I would use these over having my cycling shoes on the basis if I'm doing a bike packing trip as opposed to an ultra race, purely because I might stop and stay somewhere for a couple of days and I want to go around and explore and not actually be relying on walking around in cleats. Wandering to the pizza shop in the evening is way nicer in proper shoes. There are loads of different options of fold up shoes. These ones are from Vivo Barefoot. You can get ones from Amazon for like 10 pounds in contrast in price. They're very good for saving space in your bike packing bags and it means that you're not relying on being in your cycling shoes all the time, which just is not good for your foot hygiene and your soul. Which soul? <laughs> that one. <laughs> I like these ones because they don't have shoelaces as well and they have this little string thing, which means you can just adjust them very easily on the fly. Garmin 1040 Solar, or to be honest, any of their solar bike computers. I used this at Badlands this year for the first time and I didn't charge it for the whole race. It charged itself. I don't really need to sell it any more than that, right? 850 kilometers, I didn't charge it. The 1040 is Garmin's largest size bike computer in the range. So the big screen is really good for mapping. You can see the routes quite clearly, especially for off-road ultras and adventures having a big screen which you can zoom into the maps really really helps because sometimes the trail or the route isn't necessarily going to be clear so the bigger the screen on the bike computer you have the more beneficial it is for you while you're doing those events so quite often i plan the routes day by day on some of the adventures and trips i've done and it's really easy to go from your phone with that route and then get it onto here through the garmin connect app before using the 1040 solar i used the garmin 1030 with one of these the battery packs this simply connects to the bottom of a mount which they provide with the battery pack and it means that you can double the life of the bike computer. Brilliant. Cycling bib shorts that have additional pockets on them. So for example, these Atticus ones which have the side pocket on them, they also have a pocket on the back here. I have found these pockets incredibly useful to carry food mainly. A packet of Oreos fits very well in here and sits nicely on your leg which you can then open up and eat while riding. So generally speaking, I would choose to wear a cargo style bib short over any other kind of bib short. So for normal ride and training, purely because it's easier for carrying more stuff. And I also think it's actually really quite easy and convenient to get food out of the pockets there, as opposed to reaching around behind you. Any way to be able to carry more supplies in terms of food, water, ultimately is gonna allow you to continue riding or racing. So more pockets on kits really helps. The weirdest thing I've ever carried is two tubs of Pringles, one on each side. <laughs> Lids off, cycle along like this. Take a toothbrush with you, please. I know people often joke about dental hygiene, but on ultra races, it's so important to make sure you keep yourself clean and hygienic. You know that furry taste when you've eaten too much sugar? Get rid of it. A toothbrush is also a really good way to freshen up your mouth. Brushing your teeth with something minty, it makes you feel more awake if you're doing long rides into the night or into the early hours of the morning. It also helps wake you up and allows you to ride further. If I have the room, 
I like to take an electric toothbrush with me because it is better for cleaning. If I don't, I will take a normal toothbrush, a manual toothbrush, but ultimately, it's really, really important to have something that allows you to keep fresh. Titanium spork. Now, specifically a titanium one because they're super strong and they're really lightweight. This one, I think you can get these online anywhere, but this particular one is a branded one that Kamut giveaway. Has a bottle opener on one side of it and a sporky spoon and a sporky spoon kind of thing on the other side. The reason why it's so important to take one of these is they're super lightweight and it means that when you're on the road, you can actually eat pretty much anything because there is going to be points where you end up not with cutlery. Oh, it's metally. A fold up musette bag. This particular one is made by Apertura. Loads of other brands are making these kind of things. I specifically like this one because it is really small and you can like strap it onto your bike so you don't have to carry it in a pocket and it is waterproof, which is surprisingly useful in some countries. It opens up very easily, it's super lightweight and you can carry enough stuff in it. One of the things that they've done really well with this little musette bag is it comes with this additional strap, which means when you're riding, stay still. When I've done trips where Francis and myself have bike packed across Spain, we've ended up using this as a way to carry some food to our hotel at the end of the night, just because it's easier than trying to put it into bike bags. This is a Dyna plug. This is hands down the best ever tubeless repair system I have ever used. You basically have these two little spiky things on either end and you pretty much, depending on the size of the cut in the tire, smaller one, bigger one, find your hole, ooh, jobs are good. The reason why I think this is so good is because it works so cleanly and efficiently. The brass spike that's on it, effectively the part that goes into the tire, meaning it's easy to insert, and this rubbery part here allows you to basically fill up the puncher. There's so many different other like tubeless repair systems out there, but this one I really do think is the best one available. It can make or break a race or a ride very, very quickly or easily. They also make one which is called the Racer. Same kind of idea, but it's designed so you can mount it on your bottle cage. Therefore, even easier to get to and to use. A mini Leatherman. They're super tiny, really compact, pliers, scissors, knives, just a really useful tool to have and it takes up no room and it's super tiny and compact. No room? No room. No room, or that much room. When I did the first edition of the Silk Road Mountain Race, my front brake caliper failed and I only had a rear brake caliper. So descending was much nicer with the front brake as opposed to just relying on the rear brake. So we used the mini Leatherman to file away the cable guides on the bike and then mount the rear brake to the front of the bike. It meant that I could still kind of descend a bit more comfortably. You had one brake. In Silk Road, I had one brake that worked, yeah. I do not recommend doing Silk Road Mountain Race with one brake. Do not try that at home. Hopefully you never have to use that tool for something like that, but having it just gives you a little bit of a peace of mind. So you have it, don't have to worry about it. That's Chris's 10 most loved products. What are your most loved products? Put them in the comments down below. Do you agree with him? Yes. I don't. I do, I don't, I, I, I don't actually know. Maybe I, I agree with some. What do you agree with? Like, subscribe, comment down below, do it. Thank you very much, Chris. You need to come on an ultra ride now. No, I don't. <laughs>